Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. And we begin with breaking news from downtown Detroit, where one person has been shot not far from where tonight's tree lighting was taking place at Campus Mark Marshes. Our Mara McDonald is live at the scene tonight near Michigan Avenue in Griswold. And Mara, you just got an update from police from uh, the chief. What did he have to say? Jace, we just talked to him two minutes ago. Take a walk with me. I want to tell you what they're dealing with right now. We've got essentially two different shooting scenes. This is Michigan and Griswold. I mean, for everybody who comes down, this is right by the Coney Islands. You see how close it is to Campus Martius. The chief is telling us that you had two groups of teenagers down here that got into some kind of argument and shots were fired, striking a 15-year-old in the neck. Chief telling us that he is in critical condition right now at Children's Hospital. Now, you can see that police have blanketed this entire area, but this is not the only area that they are at. After the shooting happens here at Michigan and Griswold, across campus marshes heading towards Greektown near the Buffalo Wild Wings, you have another shooting of another young person, condition unknown at this point. The chief says at this point, his officers believe that both of these are related. Whether it is the same shooter or not is unclear. But you have a 15 year old who was in critical condition shot in the neck. You have another young person across campus marshes heading towards Greektown who was shot as well, condition unknown. Now, this happened well, well after the tree lighting down here. So the, the main event down here was over. Police telling us this happened probably right before 10 o'clock tonight. She says their criminal intelligence unit is going through all the cameras throughout this entire area. They believe they've got some pretty decent, what he refers to as video assets. He thinks they're gonna have a picture of the suspect in this case up probably tonight. So stand by, Jason and Kimberly. As soon as we mo know more, we will, of course, come back to you live. We are live in downtown Detroit. Oh, stand by. I understand that we've got some of the chief. Stand by. Take a listen. A bunch of kids uh, hanging out downtown. Uh, one group of kids gets into it, another group of kids. Uh, we've got shots fired, unfortunately. Uh, we've got a 15-year-old that's been struck uh, in the neck. Uh, he's in critical condition at a local hospital. Now we're going to be checking our video assets and uh, interviewing witnesses, uh, but you know, a lot of kids in the area, uh, and it, it's unfortunate that they have to uh, bring guns uh, downtown, and uh, when we should all be having a good time. Back here live, the chief also saying tonight: Do parents realize that they're? you know, teenagers, 15, 16 years old, are down here after curfew, after hours. Chief said if he sees and his officers see kids randomly wandering around here without a parent or a guardian, they are going to be picked up. So it is, um, it's a little tense down here right now. We've got two different shooting scenes. Police are working both. They think they're going to have a picture of at least one of the suspects in this probably later tonight. We're live downtown. Back to you. Yeah, and again, this happening well after that tree lighting, but nonetheless, a lot of people still in the area because of everything that's going on tonight. And again, one person, one 15 year old shot uh, near Campus Marshes. All right, we appreciate your live reporting tonight, Mara. Uh, we want to kick off the weekend now with uh, frigid conditions across Metro Detroit. You kind of said that like it was a good thing. Burr. But <laughs> that's <laughs> more like it. We're talking about single digit wind chills here. Uh, let's get over to Kim Adams with what to expect for the next 48 hours. Hey, Kim. Hey, it is going to be really, really cold this weekend, feeling much more like winter than it is late fall. We've got some snow showers up to our northwest in Flint, mainly north of I-69. Out to the west, winter weather advisory continues for Lansing and Jackson. Winter storm warning for uh, Big Rapids down to Grand Rapids and also Kalamazoo. But it's the temperatures that are going to be very cold this weekend and the wind chills, as you said, in the single digits. 24 in Pontiac, 27 at City Airport, 23 in Ann Arbor. But it feels like it is 11 in Flint, 11 at Metro 13 in Pontiac and we're not done there by tomorrow morning. It will feel like it's in the single digits. So if you're tailgating tomorrow at either Michigan or Michigan State, it is really going to be frigid. Even though temps will get into the 30s tomorrow, our wind chills will stay in the teens and it gets even colder 
for Sunday morning with sub zero wind chills in a few neighborhoods. So a very cold day tomorrow and we have another round of snow. We'll talk about when that rolls in, plus a sneak peek of your Thanksgiving forecast coming up. Mm -hmm. And you just heard Kim mention the west side of the state. Icy roads there causing dozens of crashes, including a 20 car pileup on US 131, as well as a 10 car pileup near Portage. Another crash involved a concrete mixer. Fortunately, no serious injuries have been reported. Our other top story tonight, a Hazel Park family breathing a sigh of relief tonight after a semi crashes just feet from their home. Police say the truck driver lost control on the I-75 service drive approaching Woodward Heights. Jacqueline Francis is live there tonight with a look at the aftermath. Jacqueline. You can see the trajectory of how this all unfolded. We're told that pick, that semi truck was going some 60 miles an hour. It goes off the road first, taking down that sign, followed by this utility pole. And if you look up at the intersection up here, that street light is not working, likely due from the truck taking out that utility pole. Now the truck kept going. The driver had lost control and that's when it made its way across the intersection, barreling through the fence just feet away from that house where the homeowner's 16 year old son was lounging on his bed inside. It sounded like thunder. It's kind of like unexplainable in words. 16 year old Josh Edward says it happened in a flash. A semi truck crashing through their fence and into the backyard this afternoon. I was laying right there. Narrowly missing the house where he was laying on the bed inside. The first thing I did, I just called 911 and uh, I ran out the house and I saw it. And at first I thought I was home alone because but my dad was actually at that light right there. His dad tells local four the driver of the truck was having a seizure and lost control of the semi just missing pedestrians, traffic and their house. The truck was pulled from the lot, but the surrounding damage remains a reminder of just how much worse this all could have been. A lot of people could have been hurt. It was crazy. I could have been hurt if, if my dad's light was green, he could have been hurt. And this, the lady over there could have been hurt. It's just, it's crazy. Police tell us that driver was taken to the hospital, but the extent of his injuries is not known. Reporting live in Hazel Park, Jacqueline Francis, Local 4. Yep, glad it wasn't worse than what it was. Jacqueline, we appreciate it. Lincoln Park Police investigating a deadly crash as a car full of children rolls over. The driver of that car, just 14 years old, it happened last night on Seacott Avenue near Porter in Lincoln Park. Police say the driver was speeding down a street and actually streaming live on Instagram just before crashing into a tree. I wish I could have helped him. I'm like, I, I was freaked out when I found out there were kids and I couldn't help them and I couldn't, I couldn't get near the car. I mean, I didn't even know if the car was going to blow up. Killed in that accident were an eight year old girl and two boys, 15 and 18 years old. A 13 year old is hospitalized in critical condition. The driver who was ejected through the windshield is stable. A Macomb County father is accused of trying to stab his son to death. It happened Wednesday at the East Point home of 68 year old Richard Maycheck and his 35 year old son. Police say the two were fighting when Mayak got a knife and stabbed his son in the head and abdomen. 35 year old was taken to a hospital and is expected to be OK. Mayak is now being held at the Macomb County Jail. A Detroit man who's been wanted for allegedly abusing his ex-girlfriend's dog is in custody tonight after being arrested in Ohio. Attorney General Dana Nessel making the announcement today that 55-year-old Julius Hawley has been extradited back to Michigan. He's accused of breaking into his ex-girlfriend's house and taking her Yorkshire Terrier mix dog, then sending her videos of him beating and torturing the dog in Detroit. Uh, the dog was taken in by Michigan Humane and has since recovered and returned home. Tonight, Holly is being held in the Wayne County Jail. Another big event is happening in downtown uh, Detroit this weekend, and it's one the city actually didn't expect to be hosting. We're talking about the Buffalo Bills Cleveland Browns football game at Ford Field. That was moved because of the snowstorm that's hitting western New York right now. Tickets went on sale today to Bills fans through a pre-sale with tickets ranging from 10 to $30 before fees. The general public will have access to any remaining tickets coming up tomorrow. Yeah.